Are you doing YouTube while also working full time? Then you are going to love this interview that I have with beauty YouTuber Abby Young. Abby started her YouTube channel in about 2019, but it wasn't until 2020 where she really decided to take it seriously. But at the same time, she was working a corporate job at Target. So in this interview, she explains how she was literally working 24 seven in order to both work at her corporate job and create content on YouTube so that she can eventually quit that job. Hello, my name is Erica Vieira. I'm a YouTube strategist and coach having helped more than 600 women behind the scenes grow on YouTube. And I am the host of the YouTube Power Hour podcast. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe because on this show, I interview well-known female content creators where we pull back the curtain to reveal what it's really like to be successful on YouTube. Enjoy this interview. Mwah. Well, hello, Abby. Welcome to the show. Hi, thank you for having me. Yes, I'm so excited to have you. I discovered your channel, you know, sometime in 2020. And I had noticed that, wow, she's growing very, very quickly. And I believe you started your channel in 2020, a very interesting year for all of us. <laughs> and share with us what inspired you to get onto YouTube and how you were able to grow so quickly? Share with us actually how many subscribers you have today and your numbers today so people who don't know you um, know that as well. Yeah, so I, ooh, I'm i around 190,000 right now, so um, close to 200,000. And I actually filmed my first YouTube video when I was in college. So when I was 18 in my freshman dorm room, I loved makeup so much. So I filmed an eyeshadow tutorial. And back at that point, I was so self-conscious and so in my head about what other people were saying about me. So when I started to hear that people were finding my videos and talking about it, I was mortified and quit. So I kind of tried, I think only like two videos at the time. And then again, my senior year of college, same thing happened. It was always something that I thought about because at the time I loved makeup so much, but I would say in general, I've just always loved beauty. So. Um, same thing happened my senior year, got embarrassed, quit, and then I started working a corporate job, like went into the real world, and it was always something that was in the back of my head, and after a few years of working that corporate job and just realizing it didn't quite do it for me, just didn't fulfill me, I just decided to try one last time. I was like, you know what, I don't care what anyone thinks about me anymore, let's just see what happens, put myself out there. So I actually think I put up my first YouTube video in 2019, but at that mm. time I was kind of all over the place with you know, having a podcast and a blog and trying to do a little bit of everything. Mm. And it wasn't until about 2020 that I really decided to just jump into YouTube um, head first really and put all of my effort there. So. Yeah, interesting. So you actually tried to do all the things when you wanted to get onto social media. What were you doing at that point? Yeah, so I started, well, it's kind of funny because even though beauty was always my first passion at the time, I was really into health and fitness. I actually mm. got my personal training certification just kind of for fun. So that is how I started to dip my toes back into social media after college was by putting my workouts out there. So that's kind of how I started. I had a blog, I had a podcast where I talked about health and fitness. I actually came out with a workout ebook as well. Um, and again, it wasn't until about 2020 where I more so leaned back into beauty because I felt like the health and fitness thing, while I loved it so much, it wasn't necessarily something that I think people were really interested in from me. Mm. Um, and I always had several passions. So I was like, well, let's just, you know, try beauty. And that's when it started to pick up. What made you come up with that conclusion that the health and fitness wasn't something people seemed to be interested in from you? I think I, I just felt like I was posting with no results for so long. And I actually, you know, at first I had a lot of people that were encouraging, but I felt like as time went on, it was probably about a year that I was really focused on health and fitness. I felt like things were actually starting to decline, like mm. likes on Instagram, because that's the time when 
Instagram workouts were definitely more so popular. And I felt like weights were going down and just engagement overall. And it just didn't seem like it was working. And it was also something that was really exhausting for me because I always loved health and fitness kind of as like a personal escape for me. So putting that out there where I felt like I had to crank out workout content took the fun away as well. So it kind of, you know, worked out, I think, for the best that that's not where things really took off for me, because now I can kind of go back to that just being a personal love for me and not feeling so drained by it. So when you you focused on your YouTube, you said that was in 2020. Mm -hmm. Was that when you made the shift to focusing on beauty as well? Did that happen simultaneously? Yeah, so I started off on YouTube trying to do a little bit of everything content wise. So I was filming workout videos and filming vlogs showing what I would eat in a day. But then I was also doing makeup tutorials and started a little bit at that point to talk about skincare and i think i was just trying to figure out my space and what i enjoyed the most for content and it just worked out that i naturally saw views gravitating towards beauty content much more than any of my health and fitness content so i kind of just phased that out and then fully focused on beauty and when you focused on your youtube in 2020 you were working your corporate job at the Mm -hmm. same time. What did that schedule look like for you? Oh my gosh. (laughs) Um, it was, it was a lot. So for probably a full year and a half, well, actually I don't even think it was that long because then COVID happened and we were working from home, but for a long time I would film all weekend. I'd film all my content then, then I would wake up a couple hours earlier before I went into the office to work before. I would bring my laptop with me over my lunch break to work so that I could edit over my lunch break. And then I would get home at night and edit and prepare for videos all night. So I was truly working nonstop for a year and a half at least. It was super exhausting and um, not something that you can do long term because I got so burnt out, but I basically was nonstop working (laughs) wow so any minute that you weren't working your corporate job and i don't know if you want to share you know where where you're working you were doing youtube Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah so i am comfortable sharing i worked for target at their headquarters office um Mm -hmm. i was in a consulting role when i left um so kind of like merchandising support but never anything to do with beauty oh wow And how many videos a week were you uploading when you were doing your full-time job? Yeah, that evolved because when I was still working that job and doing all different forms of content on different platforms, I was doing one podcast a week, two blog posts a week, and one YouTube video a week. Then as time went on, I realized there's no point in me doing a blog if I don't even enjoy it. I don't even read other people's (laughs) blogs. Why am I doing this? So I stopped posting on the blog and then I started to do two YouTube videos a week in my podcast and then again as time went on I just realized that I was trying to put my energy into too many things and YouTube was always what I was most passionate about so then I kind of phased out the podcast and started posting three to five videos a week. Oh wow so you're posting three to five videos a week when you were working full-time yeah yeah oh, three to five yeah i think i had probably like a six month stint where i was posting five videos a week wouldn't wow. recommend it it was so draining and honestly i feel like as a viewer that's too much to keep up with so i know myself just as a viewer of other people's channels i don't watch five mm-hmm. videos of anyone a week so I think three feels much more feasible from a viewer perspective and then also just me being able to fully prepare for a video in the way that I want to film it, edit it the way I want and not have it be so hectic. What made you think you had to do five videos a week? I don't, I don't know. That's a good question. I feel like for me, I've always kind of been an all in or nothing type of person. And when I started to see a little bit of momentum on my YouTube channel, I think that made me want to just go all in with it. 
And I definitely was doing too much for a while, but I knew that the one video a week that I used to do was not enough, that I was never going to grow at the rate that I wanted to with just one video a week. So then I switched to five. I don't know. (laughs) So in doing your YouTube, was your goal and intention to do it full time and to eventually leave that corporate job? I don't know that I ever in the beginning actively thought of that as a goal for myself because I don't think I really thought I could do it or that it would ever happen for me. I think there was always this part of me that was like, wow, that would be so incredible. Could you imagine if that happened? Mm -hmm. But it wasn't something that I actually saw as realistic for myself, probably until like a year in. So what motivated you then to grow so quick, so like to grow on YouTube? Because you're doing these five videos a week. I would think you're saying, okay, I want to quit my job. I have this goal, right? A lot of people are like that. So for you, what was that motivation behind doing so much content? I think it was that small part of me mm-hmm. that felt like maybe mm-hmm. that could happen for me. And just knowing that this is always something that I've wanted to do and have loved that made me go all in because I wanted to see what could happen if I did. Wow. Are you glad that you did? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so what? at what point then, well, first off, let's backtrack. When you started to do YouTube hardcore and focus only on that, not do your podcast, not do your blog, mm-hmm. How do you remember how many subscribers you were at? <sighs> I think it was a, around 15,000, maybe not even. Okay. So at what point did your channel really start to take off? Because now you're at 200K, so you know you grew pretty quickly in the last year and a half or so. Mm-hmm. I don't know if there was ever a point where I felt like, oh, wow, this has really taken off. Mm-hmm. Behind the scenes, I've always felt like it's kind of just been like slow and steady wins the race and I've never had a video where I felt like it went super crazy viral and I got all these subscribers as a result I feel like it's just been consistent steady growth Mm. over the past yeah year and a half or so well you know the beauty space because that's what you talk about hair beauty all of it right so what would be your advice to somebody who maybe has a beauty channel and they're not seeing that kind of growth or they're even thinking about starting one yeah that's a good question because definitely is very competitive and i think at the same time the type of content that people want to watch has changed so much so i kind of grew up with youtube makeup tutorials were all the rage so that's actually how i started off in the beauty space on all and surprise I was not seeing um right there were no views in the tutorial space so as I've always enjoyed all different aspects of beauty that's something that was genuine for me to put out oh let's try skincare content hair care so I would say for anyone that is trying to get into that space be open to testing out different types of content even if you go into it thinking let's say you know makeup is what I love the most be open to trying new things because you never know what people are going to enjoy the most from you. And while I switched kind of from makeup to skincare for a long time, it probably wasn't like a year, you know, until a year into my channel when I really started to dive into hair care. And that's what I feel people have enjoyed the most from me. So it's kind of been this constant evolution where I'm putting feelers out for different types of content and just seeing how they perform. What do you think is the best type of content for your channel? Hair care right now, I think people are the most interested in from me, but at the same time, people still enjoy skin content. I think that that's definitely changed too, because when I started making skincare content, it was predominantly review based. And how I kind of went about that was I would look for skincare products that I thought people would be most interested in and see if anyone else had made a video on that topic. And if not, then I would post that. Um, and that's kind of how I felt like I hacked the system a little bit to be able to get views. But then as time went on, I feel like the reviews get to be a little bit redundant. So I had to start to think of creative ways to incorporate that. So for example, something that I've started doing recently, um, is a series where I share drugstore gems and that's where I can incorporate drugstore skincare products, you know, and not such a traditional 
sit down review way of an entire line of products. Mm, interesting. So what do you think sets you apart from all the other beauty YouTubers out there? I think the fact that I do cover all aspects of beauty is something unique to me because I think a lot of people find success and really niching down to one thing. So just hair care, just skin care, just makeup. So I actually think that my viewers appreciate that I kind of discuss all things. I think there's times on my channel where I'm more heavily focused on one thing than another, but I still am incorporating all aspects of beauty. And I see comments from my viewers that they really enjoy that. Um, and I also think I just approach things I don't know what the right word is for it, but I really love the research behind skincare and hair care. I buy textbooks about those topics. And so I love that educational research element of it. And so I always try to incorporate that in my videos so that I have a mix of that. Mm. But at the same time, it still is fun and lighthearted. Yeah, I enjoy watching your videos. I do feel like you give a lot of like really good in-depth info. I think I was trying to think when I found you I think it was like hair care you know I think mm -hmm. during pandemic everyone's doing a lot of at-home treatments deep conditioners yeah. and I think that's actually how I originally found you was your hair care videos Funny. yeah okay. so let's go back to your corporate job and doing YouTube mm -hmm. at what point did you quit your corporate job when was that so I left this April so 2021 yes and at that point, I believe it had been about a year and a half since I was really just like honed in on YouTube. Yeah, that sounds about right. Was there a certain mark when it came to number of subscribers or the income you were receiving? Was there something you were trying to reach before you quit that job? Or what, take us back to that time where you made that decision to quit and what happened? It was really, really stressful because Yes, you can set income goals for yourself, but the thing about YouTube is there's no guarantee. You know, you're not given a salary at the start of the year that you're going to make. So um, that was very stressful for me to step away from something that was so stable and steady and guaranteed into something that was not promised at all. Um, in my mind, I always felt like at 100,000, that's a good point for me to leave. And I just got to the point where it felt like a waste of time for me to be at Target because I knew, not that I didn't feel grateful for that job, mm -hmm. but I knew that if I had, you know, a full work week of time available to do YouTube, that I would see much more traction there and I would see better results there than maybe I was even getting at Target. So at that point, that's when I knew it's time for me to step away. And I think it was actually on the day that I told my boss that I was leaving that I hit 100,000. So it kind of just wow. all happened like that at the same time, ironically. Um, yeah, but so I would say for me, it was more so that I could not handle doing both anymore. And I knew like, this is my chance to just try it out. So. Wow. And when it came to earning an income through YouTube, were you were you getting the mo majority of it from AdSense? Were you working with sponsors, affiliates? Mm -hmm. What did that look like for you? At the time that I left Target, I hadn't done a lot of work with sponsors and I still don't do very much of that on YouTube. I would say um, I do a lot more of that on TikTok, but on YouTube, not as much. So at the time that I left Target, I would say I was about half and half AdSense and affiliates. Mm, okay, got it. So what you know, you're, you said the big reason that you wanted to quit your job was because you just couldn't sustain that kind of schedule. It sounded like you're working and then working. So you're working 24 mm seven. -hmm. What did your schedule look like once you quit? Were you finally able to get that that breathing time and a little bit more of a stable and normal life? Yeah, so that was a very interesting transition because I was so used to working mm -hmm. around the clock that I had to really try to force myself to stop. And that's something that I still am working on to this day. It's really hard when you don't have a guarantee 
as far as the dollar amount of money that you're going to make to shut it off because there's always something that you could be doing. But I would say once I left, I was able to actually close my laptop at around 6 p.m. I didn't have to work on the weekends anymore. So that was a really nice change. <laughs> yeah. And then did you or are you still maintaining that schedule of five videos a week or three to five videos a week? three videos a week on YouTube right now. Okay. And then I'm posting two to three videos on TikTok and doing a little bit with reels here and there. So yeah. What I know you had mentioned earlier that you were really wanting to go all in on YouTube and focus on YouTube. And you mentioned your blog, you mentioned Instagram. So at what point did t TikTok sneak in there for you? That was last spring, right? Yeah, kind of when it all started with COVID. I think I started posting in like April or May um, and that the growth there, the growth that anybody can experience on TikTok is so much more than YouTube. Mm -hmm. So that blew up for me in a way that I don't think YouTube has. Mm. And so how big are you on TikTok? Um, I think I'm at 520 ish thousand there. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. So did the success of your TikTok have anything to do with you quitting your job? No, but mm -hmm. now it's definitely become something that is an important part of the mix for me. Because like I was saying earlier, I feel that I'm able to work with sponsors there more so than I am on YouTube. And a lot of brands are putting their ad money into TikTok over YouTube anyway. So that's something for me that is a good source of income. So now it would be, but yeah, at the time I wasn't really, I mean, you don't get paid much on TikTok yeah. for views at all. So, yeah, yeah. So when you were, when you quit your job, how big were you at TikTok at the time? I actually don't know. Mm. You like 350,000 or something. Okay. But yeah. you said that at that point it wasn't even, really part of like the income mix for you no oh, yeah so at what point at what your at what size were you were you on on tiktok where brands started to take notice and want to work with you i would say i had brands reaching out at around one hundred thousand, but not in the not in a major way i mm -hmm. would say once i hit around 350 400 000, that's when i started to get um a lot more interest. So you said earlier that you feel as if brands are more interested in investing their ad dollars in TikTok versus YouTube. Mm -hmm. What what point did you realize that? What what makes you say that? Well, it's been my personal experience. Every time I have a brand reach out, mm -hmm. I would say 90% of the time they're just interested in TikTok and I am actually um, in conversations right now with potential management and that's something that they told me as well that they're just not seeing the ad spend in YouTube from advertisers in the way that they used to mm. and brands are predominantly focused on TikTok they thought they may see that pick up again with shorts but they really haven't I think shorts just didn't take off in the way that people were hoping so yeah that's something they confirmed as well oh that's really interesting so at this point what percentage of your income is from TikTok versus YouTube? Probably about 40% from TikTok and then 60% from YouTube slash affiliates. Yeah, because affiliate, you're not getting any affiliates from TikTok, right? Or do you get a little bit? Well, With so I have promo links codes. in all of my bios. So yeah. I have my affiliate links there, but I would say it's definitely smaller than YouTube because someone would have to click on my page and then click through there versus on YouTube. If someone's watching a review, mm -hmm. then the link will be right in the description. So it's available, but yeah, not as much traction there. And with YouTube, what percentage is from affiliates versus AdSense? Like how much is that? I'm not sure actually right now. I would have to check. Mm -hmm. It kind of, it ebbs and flows. Mm -hmm. um, if I had to guess, it would probably be right now like 60% AdSense, 40% affiliates. Mm. But that's a total guess. Yeah. <laughs> and what what part, what percentage of your time is being spent on the TikTok versus YouTube? So that's funny because I would say 
80% of my time, 85% is spent on YouTube and the rest on TikTok. TikTok. TikTok is just, because it's short form content, it's a lot quicker to film and edit and mm -hmm. post. I mean, YouTube, I spend a full day each week, six to eight hours just filming. Mm -hmm. That doesn't include editing or researching and preparing for content and um, tags and everything. So YouTube takes up significantly more time for me than TikTok does. Yeah, that's interesting considering that TikTok is starting to creep up in regards to what percentage of income mm -hmm. you're getting from it. So where do you see yourself when it comes to TikTok and YouTube, like, you know, a year or so or two years from now? It's so hard to say, you know, I this is still really new for me. Mm -hmm. I've only been doing this for a couple years. So it's really hard to predict what's going to happen. Um, I'm hoping it'll just continue to be the same story, slow and steady growth. Um, but who knows? <laughs> yeah. So you, so you're looking to just still just focus on these two platforms at this point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, very cool. Very interesting. Um, now we're going to go into the bonus round where I asked everyone that comes on the show the same questions. And you ready for that? Yeah. Okay. You just answer with like the first thing that comes to mind. First question is, what is your number one struggle with YouTube? Mm, filming. Yeah. Well, what about filming is so hard? This is something I feel like nobody talks about. So I don't know if this is just a personal struggle <laughs> yeah. that I have, but sitting down for hours and hours and hours to talk to an inanimate object, I feel like I start to go crazy. And if I'm not having an on day, it's really easy to just stumble over my words and have a really hard time getting words out in the way that I want to. And I'll have to refilm over and over. And it's really hard for me. I think part of that is probably because I film all three of my videos in one day and it just gets exhausting. Um, that's just something that I feel like works best for me right now because it's stressful to, you know, get ready and be on all the time. But that process is definitely the most exhausting. So you have three videos a week on YouTube and you basically film it all in one day. Yeah. 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 Right now I do that on Mondays. And then how's the rest of your week look like? So Mondays I film Tuesday. I edit all day. That day is not very fun either. Yeah. And then, um, a lot of the times editing will trickle into Wednesday as well. Um, but then at that point, I start preparing for the next week's videos. And uh, I'll work in some SEO work and tagging on YouTube. And then I would say spend the rest of the week doing emails, contacting brands, filming for TikTok, thinking of TikTok ideas, um, doing a little bit of reels as well. Yeah, interesting. What is your highest viewed video on YouTube and how much did you make from it? Oh, I, I want to say it is my CeraVe skincare review that I posted probably like almost two years ago now. I don't know how much I got paid from it. I think that's the highest views. And if you were to start over right now with your YouTube channel, what would you do differently? Hmm. I probably would just tell myself to not even go into the health and fitness space at all, because I feel like I spent a lot of time there trying mm. to figure out what would work when that topic in general just wasn't working for me. Um, obviously hindsight is <laughs> everything, yeah. but if I knew what I knew now, yeah. Yeah. What is your favorite video? you created and posted on your YouTube channel? It's funny because one that I am really proud of is one of my least favorite to film because it takes so long, but I have started a series mm -hmm. on my channel where I do a self tan showdown and I test out a ton of different self tanners over a span of weeks because obviously you can only use one per week. And then I show the results of all of them and review them. So that one is probably the most rewarding to put together and I know people who watch it really appreciate that as well because i think the last one i posted took me like 11 weeks to put together um but those are really fun when they're finally done yeah that's a lot of work yeah. <laughs> do you think it pays off yes yeah 
That's good. Any video you uploaded that you're particularly excited about that didn't do so well? Oh, I feel like I've had so many of those. It's hard to think of just one off the top of my head, but I feel like that's just kind of the gag with YouTube is you can have an idea that you think is going to perform really well that you're really excited about and it just completely flops. Um, gosh, what was one I posted recently? I posted a compilation video of a lot of my skincare videos from TikTok because that was a trend that I was seeing going around. I was like, oh, that's nice. And I don't actually have to like sit down and film anything. I can just put all those together. And that one totally flopped. Mm. That was a bummer. <laughs> yeah. What is the biggest opportunity you got as a result of your YouTube channel? I think being able to leave my corporate job for sure. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah. <laughs> what is your superpower that you think has led to your success on YouTube? I think just my work ethic and my sense of motivation. I'm really self-driven when it comes to mo uh, motivation, excuse me. And when I am passionate about something like I am about YouTube, I will do everything in my power to make it work. And it's a really exhausting job. So you have to have that in you because there's always, you know, moments where you're not getting the views that you expected. You're not seeing the growth that you were hoping for. Things are slower. And especially when you're first starting out, you're most likely not going to see results for a long time. And I would say that's the hardest period because you have to have this work ethic that's going to allow you to post consistently knowing that you're not going to see views for a while. So I would say, yeah, work ethic. What would you tell someone who maybe struggles with motivation, like how to get motivated? I think if you're finding that you're consistently unmotivated, it's probably important to reconsider if this is even something that you're really passionate about. Because for me, at least, if I truly am passionate about something, that's enough to motivate me, even if I'm exhausted. Maybe motivation isn't even the right word, because of course, there, there are always times that I'm unmotivated, but I'm always dedicated to it. Mm -hmm. And so I think everyone has to really be honest with themselves about whether or not it's something that they're truly dedicated to, because that pushes me forward. Yeah. What is your number one piece of advice you would tell someone who's just starting out with their YouTube channel? To push through the self-doubt and the worry about what people are saying about you because when you first start to put yourself out there, it's such a scary feeling and people are going to talk for sure. People talked about me, of course, but if it's something that you really love and that you think could be something big for you, you have to learn to just work through that and try to shut it off as much as you can because that's just going to hold you back. And that held me back for a really long time where I would be scared about what people are going to say so I wouldn't film or I wouldn't post something. You have to just mm. learn to like sit with the embarrassment because then eventually when it does pick up, that completely goes away. What was it that people were, were saying about you that made you uncomfortable? I don't know that I ever knew like exactly what people were saying. I just knew that people were finding videos and kind of just laughing about it. Like, what is this girl doing? She's trying to be famous. Oh my mm -hmm. gosh, just another girl trying to be an influencer. And that was so frustrating because that was never what it was about for me. Mm -hmm. But I knew that's how it, that's how it always comes across whenever anyone's trying to become a content creator. Mm -hmm. The assumption is that that person wants to be a famous influencer. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so that was never fun to hear things like that. But again, yeah. I just have to learn to shut it off and keep going. Is that people in real life or people online that you didn't know? In real life. Oh, okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's the biggest struggle. Well, not biggest, but it's, it's one of the struggles a lot of people face is having this embarrassment with their own friends and family when they're trying to start something and people look at him being like, Oh, what do you, what do you think you're doing? Or who do you think you are to do something like that? Yeah. 
I think, you know, thankfully for me, my family and my close friends were always so, so supportive and we're just like, we believe in you. We know this is going to turn into something for you. And so that really helped to push me forward. It's, you know, it's usually never the people closest to you that have bad things to say. It's people who don't really know you that are making assumptions. Yeah. And I think a lot of times people are are a little bit jealous because they see somebody going after what they really want. And when they get it, you know, it's like, oh, and then it makes them feel bad for not going after what they want. Yeah, I think that definitely comes into the picture when you take off. But I think in the beginning, when you have no views, no followers, no anything, people maybe aren't jealous about that. It's easy to make fun of somebody who is putting themselves out there and not seeing any results. Yeah. But yeah, then once they do, definitely. I mean, it's probably a little bit of sweet, not revenge, but it's kind of like, haha, I made it. Or like, I got to, I'm doing this full time, you know? <laughs> I'm sure everybody feels that way. It's like, yeah. it's working for me. Okay, you naysayers. <laughs> <laughs> well, Abby, thank you so much for coming on to the show. It's been awesome to see your success on YouTube in such a short period of time. And thank you for sharing with me and our audience here a little bit more about you and your journey here on YouTube and on TikTok. For anyone that doesn't know about you or are familiar with your channel, where can they find you? So I am Abby Young on all platforms. It's Abby with an E, so A-B-B-E-Y, and then Y-U-N-G is how my last name is spelled, so Young without the O. So you can find me on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Great. Thank you. Bye. Bye. I hope you enjoyed that interview and you learned a lot from it. Now, if you have a YouTube channel or considering starting a YouTube channel that you're serious about growing and you want the best of the best when it comes to personalized feedback, advice, and up to the minute YouTube strategy, then consider my Zero to Influence YouTube Bootcamp for Women. I have been running this bootcamp since 2018 and we have hundreds upon hundreds of very successful students that have gone through the program. And I can go on and on about the YouTube bootcamp, but I wanted to hear it directly from some of the women themselves. I feel so lucky that I got to do Erica's bootcamp. Before I joined the bootcamp. Before I joined the bootcamp. Before joining Erica's bootcamp. My channel was all over the place. I didn't know what I was talking about. I would hear people say that I need to find my why and my voice and my audience and understand my target audience, but I never felt like I really understood what that meant. Erica helped me come up with YouTube video ideas. She helped me with consistency. She helped me to interpret my analytics. I started with 12,000 subscribers and now I have over 50,000 and it is growing rapidly. My channel has grown almost 100,000 subscribers. I definitely wouldn't have gotten to this place in such a short amount of time without Erica's bootcamp. What makes Erica special is that she has been talking to and analyzing YouTube channels for years and that has given her this bank of knowledge to pull from. I'm constantly asking her questions about YouTube. I'm asking her advice about my YouTube channel. Thinking the Zero to Influence YouTube Bootcamp was one of the best. The best, the best decision I could have ever, 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 ever made for myself, for my channel, for my own personal growth as a human being. I could not be happier. I love that it has reinvigorated me in such a beautiful way. So I am so, 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 so happy that I've joined. You're crazy not to hire her. Get on it. All right.